Tēnei au, tēnei au, ko te hōkai nei o taku tapu ai. Ko te hōkai nuku, ko te hōkai rangi, ko te hōkai a tipuna. A nevi a rangi, i pikiti ai ki ngā rangi tūhaha ki te tihi o manono. I roko hina tūra, ko i o matua kore anake. I riro i hoinga ke te o te wānanga, ko te ke te tua uri, ko te ke te tua te a, ko te ke te aroni. Ka tiri tiri a, ka pau pau a, ki a papatua nuku. Ka puta te ira tangata ki te whei au, ki te au marama. According to legend, soon after Tāne separated Ranginui and Papa Tuanaku, he went on a journey to seek the three kete of ancestral knowledge. Now this event is captured in that karakia and provides us with a powerful metaphor for holding on to your rangatiratanga. Now I was initially unsure about whether or not to begin my speech with a karakia, because I am very much aware of the place in which I am speaking and the audience to whom I am speaking to. I was hesitant because I wanted to be worthy of your attention and I didn't want anyone to lose interest in what I have to say right from the get-go. But the reason I still decided to begin my speech here tonight with a karakia is partly because it pays tribute to who I am and partly because it helps ground me in this unfamiliar space filled with so many unfamiliar faces. The very act of beginning my speech with a karakia at this fantastic event is rooted in my topic tonight about holding on to your rangatiratanga. Now the word rangatiratanga has multiple meanings depending on the context it is used and how it's applied. Charles Royale breaks the word down into three parts. Ranga, tira, tanga. Now the word ranga comes from the word raranga, meaning to weave. Now, tira means a group of people who have come together, and tanga is a suffix used. And when you pull them all back together, you get rangatiratanga, the act of weaving people together, connecting the past, present, and future for a common purpose. Now, I also believe that rangatiratanga is a Māori way of knowing, doing, and being. But the challenge is how we hold on to our rangatiratanga. And for me personally, my name embodied the very essence of what holding on to your rangatiratanga means to me. And even though she passed away over three years ago, her legacy continues to have a profound impact on who I am today. Now, everyone who knew my nanny Joss knew that she was completely deaf in one ear, swore like a sailor and smoked like a chimney. She was renowned for being rude and blunt, irrespective of who you were, where you were and where you were from. Now, I clearly remember one incident when I was five years old and Nan was picking me up after school. My teacher at the time, whom I still fondly remember to this day, was busy organising our class into forming two straight lines. Now, knowing me at the time, I was busy playing around in the back, not listening at all, until I noticed that Nan had arrived early and she was making a beeline straight towards my teacher. So I was just thinking, oh my gosh. Anyways, I made my way towards them, and I overheard my teacher asking if they could discuss the issue elsewhere, away from us kids. And unbeknownst to her, this was like waving a flag at a bull in a china shop. Next minute, her arms are flailing all over the place. She's pointing her finger as she continues to get louder and louder. And I just remember my cheeks feeling red hot and feeling so, so sorry for my teacher. It turns out that the crime was misspelling my name on a school newsletter by placing, the ma placing a macron over the letter A of my name. Now, when my teacher's defense, my name is pronounced with a long A, Wātini. And although it was unintentional and such a simple mistake to make and correct, my name was heavily offended because she believed that this was an attack on my identity who I am and what my name represents. I am the fifth Watine in my family to carry the name Watine, after her father whom she adored. And my name's strength in her culture, 
in her language, in her identity and in her beliefs, has taught me that holding on to your rangatiratanga isn't just an intellectual exercise. It's a spiritual and an emotional investment too. So, who am I? My name is Watene Moana Campbell. I'm a descendant of Paikia, and I come from a long line of chiefs through my ancestor, Proden. The story of how Paikia rode from Hawaii to New Zealand on the back of a whale is legend, thanks to Keisha Castle Hughes and the movie Whale Rider, written by Wati Ihimaira. So for me, holding on to my rangatiratanga is about my real privilege, because I've spent six hours a day, five days a week, 40 weeks a year, for, four, for 17, nearly 18 years of my life, immersed in Te Reo Māori. Except, of course, for three or four hours of English classes per week. However, outside of Kura, I am constantly surrounded by the English language, through TV, the radio, the internet, sports games, through Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, not to mention by my wider peers and whānau communities. Being able to speak Te Reo Māori fluently probably alienates me from nearly all of you here in this room today and from most of the population in New Zealand. <coughs> and I think it's no coincidence that we're celebrating Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori this week, and the theme is basically about rangatiratanga, strength, leadership, and pride within our nation and the revitalization of te reo Māori as a living language. Now, alongside the wiki o te reo Māori, there are currently some really cool ways through social media platforms to help promote and increase the use of the language in our city. Now, some of you may recognize me from a series of bilingual videos to support the Wellington City Council's launch of their Māori policy, Te Tauihu, so that our language is heard, seen, and spoken in our capital city. Now, some examples include renaming Frank Kitts Lagoon as Whairepo, renaming Civic Square to Te Ngāko, celebrating Matariki, the Māori New Year, with fireworks held in July, and the Wellington Regional newspaper, the Dominion Post, has a Māori title, aptly named Te Upoko Te Ika. Now this year, I also decided to dip my toes in the Mahuru Māori Challenge by making a commitment to communicate solely in Te Reo Māori, including texting, emailing and social media. Which, let me tell you, is no easy feat. Last Friday afternoon, I went over to Mecca's with some mates after school. And I felt really uneasy in going into this because I was afraid that the staff would get frustrated with me. I was afraid that I would be, be embarrassed in front of everyone. I was afraid that I wouldn't get served, that I wouldn't be able to eat. To put this into context, last Friday afternoon, I was at the Basin Reserve McDonald's. And here's a short video of what happened. So the most important thing that I was humbled by in this experience was that even though the staff admitted to having no te reo Māori at all, she was still willing to give it a go. And in doing so, in that moment, she displayed rangatiratanga that day by weaving the threads of props, 
transliterations, verbal and sign language, all together for the purpose of me not starving. Now, earlier in my speech, I mentioned the metaphor about the three kite of ancestral knowledge as a means to hold on to your rangatiratanga. As a final message from me, how will you kit yourself out? Like Tane, what knowledge will you seek to fill your kite? Now, ite wii wii ko tau nei te kōrero ki tāhaki. Tēnei au e mihi atu ki a koutou katoa ko tai mai ki tēnei whare o tātou. Now, it is also traditional for me to end my speech with a vayata, with a song. So here I invite you all to stand up and sing along with me about a whale, a very big whale, a long whale, a fat whale, a spouting whale with a swishing tail swimming in the deep blue sea. Avai. Toru. Pa to hora nui, to hora roa, to hora tinga. Again, to hold a new.